start off, kind of just have you introduce yourself, your background, the company you're involved with, maybe some of the stuff they do in Utah, and then go from there. Yeah. So my name is Liz Robakovich. I am currently in Boise, Idaho. I moved here about a month ago. Um, I'm with RJ Performance Group, which is based in Salt Lake City, and that's a team of mental performance coaches. So we all have our master's degrees in sports psychology, um, and we really say we do like neck up training with athletes and performers. So focusing on things like their mentality um, and how we train that in addition to all the physical training that they're used to doing. Um, so yeah, I've been here for about a month, just joined the group and we've been doing really well in Salt Lake City. So we thought we would expand out here. Um, and in Salt Lake City, we work with collegiate athletes or we're with Weber State, Utah State, um, all of their athletics. And then we also work with some professional groups. So Rayal Salt Lake, um, we work with Utah Jazz, their revenue team. Um, so we've got a really good thing going there. So I'm excited to see what happens here in Idaho. That's awesome. Have you guys got any ins yet with like uh, Boise State or any of the high schools there? Yeah, so I've started kind of having those conversations. Um, so we'll we'll hope to see that turn over into actual work in the next few months, but having a lot of conversations with the high schools here and hopefully BSU. Awesome. Uh, it's funny because that was my so Utah State. I went to Utah State and I forget my professor's name, but my favorite class, he was actually a sports psychologist. And he worked with the uh, um, Olympic ski team in Park City and, mm-hmm. then, and then taught at the university. And that I feel like that class was maybe my favorite class I took in the entirety of like the exercise science program. Yeah. And our gym here, I thought it was, it was great you guys reached out because that's one of the things I feel like I don't have any formal background in it, but I feel like that's where we do a good job first and foremost is um, parents always comment on, you know, confidence of athletes going up before really any physical changes occur just due to mm-hmm. the amount of time it takes to to cause some of that with a youth athlete but so I'm excited to dive a little bit deeper into it and maybe you know my audience is going to be more of like that middle school high school age group um so maybe we can hit on some like things maybe I'm sure they all, all the athletes run into this similar but this younger generation has all the impacts of the internet and social media and, and a couple yeah. Di- yeah a couple different things and like I had to grow up with building my self-confidence and whatnot so yeah absolutely no I think that's awesome like that age group is prime for this kind of stuff and I think that's cool like y'all have an awesome ability you're already providing this physical training so why not you know supplement with the mental training too yeah of course um so one thing that I've kind of adopted and there'll be coaches that disagree with with me is with our athletes we're um always positive So like, we'll have moments where we have to deliver like direct feedback, but we've never found ourselves having to deliver anything in like a negative way, nor like a humiliating way. So maybe touch basis on how coaches can affect some of that and what you see, like repercussions with athletes, maybe that uh, parents or coaches, I guess both of them fall kind of into that category. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think that age group, like it's so important to touch on that because they're still figuring everything out in life, right? And so if they have this person who is helping them build up confidence through getting in more reps, mental training, whatever it is, like the weight that a coach or that a trainer is going to hold, if they do kind of turn it back onto, I'm going to give really negative feedback, or I'm going to chew this kid out, that has such a bigger impact than just a random Joe off the street. And so I think it's important, like know your role, like you have a huge impact on this kid, this athlete. So everything you say is going to have 10 times more weight than anyone else. Um, But yeah, I think, I think that's great. And I mean, this opens up a whole can of worms, but I'm sure usually coaches are chewing kids out for some aspect of failure, a mistake, failing at something. And that opens up the whole can of worms of what is your relationship with failure. And that's something we work with athletes a ton on is figuring out your relationship with failure right now. It sucks. Like it is hindering you more than anything because the reality is you are going to mess up. You are going to fail. That is one thing we can all be sure of. So I think when coaches or parents, because you're right, they kind of fall into the same wheelhouse when they chew out a kid for doing what is inevitable 
I mean, the repercussions are, they're not good. <laughs> that is going to end up affecting them long term. So I think if that's the approach I'll take of just keeping it positive, like, absolutely, that is the right road to be on. Yeah, because I, what I find is the most like commonality I see with kids that we work with is at very first is they're very afraid to fail. Um, and especially, like I said, like, potentially social media, the way the world's connected, there's, they feel like there's more eyes on them, even if that's the case or not. Um, mm -hmm. So kids are actually really terrified to um, do things that they're not 100% confident they can do, which will really hold them back, right? Um, and I see this even more so with the female athletes. Um, but that's been like, the biggest thing I think at first is just putting them in an environment where it's safe, we are we are supportive of them. If they do fail, it's never a negative like response from us. And even within like the first couple of weeks, you'll see kids start to try things that potentially would have took a 10 minute conversation to get them to try beforehand. Yeah. Um, so if you can expound on that a little bit and maybe like a difference, if you see a difference between men and females or if females just talk about it more than men do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there might be a little bit of that. I mean, I think we all know that typically, and this is a sweeping generalization, but typically females are going to be a little bit more open with their emotions. Um, but I think if you guys are setting up a safe environment to fail, like that is just going to have an incredible impact on these kids throughout their lives. And, you know, it makes sense to not want to fail. We're all raised thinking failure is bad, mistakes are bad. And in some capacity, I think that's good. But one thing that we work with athletes on is, when the failure happens, when the mistake happens, let's just break it down into objectively what happened. Like, let's like look past the emotion of I'm embarrassed, I'm pissed, whatever it is. And let's break it down. Like fundamentally what went wrong in that mistake. And then from there, that sets up this great framework of now you can grow from it, right? Instead of it being this thing that sucks and I'm just so clouded by emotions, I can't even see straight. Now we have a whole path in front of us of this is what went wrong. This is how I can improve next time. And all of a sudden we're seeing failure as a necessary step towards growth. And so I think that's something we can do. And, you know, I think there's opposition to just don't be emotional about it. Just don't be pissed about it. And so one thing we say at RJ performance is like embrace the suck. Like if it sucks and you are upset, that makes sense. That means you care. And so, um, one thing we do is like set up a time limit. So 20 seconds of, I'm just going to be pissed. Like I'm mad. I didn't get that. I'm mad. I messed up. I'm going to feel that for 20 seconds. When that 20 seconds is over, let's talk about it. Fundamentally, what went wrong? What can I improve on? I love that. Um, I like that a lot. So I guess my, where that takes my mind down is like, what are a couple things that coaches that listen to this? What what's a couple things that they can execute on right away after listening to this conversation of like how they deliver feedback? Yeah, um, we really like the setup of well, better, learn. And so this is a great way to reflect on whatever it was, practice, game, training, and think about, you know, you can set it up to be whatever it is. It can be one thing per athlete, it can be three things per team, but think about things that went well. Let's celebrate first. So, well, think about things that you could do better on. So maybe things that didn't go so great. And then what are things that we learned? And what that does is it's this awesome framework that you can set up. You know, I've worked with coaches who did this at the end of a game, every single game. And it took like two minutes tops. But it was an awesome opportunity for the team to just reflect and then look forward in a way that actually sets them up for success. So I think that's an awesome tactic that coaches can use. And I think that sets teams up too for like believing that coaches are looking forward, that they want to celebrate what went well, but they also want to acknowledge where we can improve and how we're going to do that. And ultimately I think that trickles down to the athletes. Yeah, that's perfect. And then, um, so this is a conversation I want to kind of jump over real quick to parents too. So, um, cause what we see with today's youth sport culture is, um, parents are overly more and more involved um, maybe overstep their role in terms of like trying to be a coach um, when necessarily it's not the best time. But so an example, um, I think these kids are a lot smarter sometimes than um, parents think just in terms mm -hmm. of like, so I've had a conversation. She won't mind me sharing this. I won't share any names, but a parent 
um, was really concerned about their kid's self-confidence. He's a newer athlete to the gym. She's concerned with um, how slow he is in sport and whatnot. And I've been around them um, together and she's constantly reminding him of his shortfalls. So you're so small, you are so slow. Um, and so I had to have a little conversation with her kind of one-on-one -on -one when she came to me and asked me like, what can I do? And I, my opinion, obviously I'm not, I don't have the background, but my opinion just from experience is I'm like, the first thing we need to do is you need to stop reminding him of what his, maybe where his weaknesses are and let him, uh, cause he knows, like he knows he's slow. He knows he's small. You just reinforcing that every conversation you have with him, um, isn't going to help him progress. Number one. And number two, it's going to tunnel vision on tunnel vision, him on the things that he's not the best at, right. Instead of allowing him to maybe find space to grow on those areas and also put energy towards where, what he is good at and what can give him an advantage on the field. Right. So mm -hmm. maybe take a dive into that. And if you see that and with coaches and parents. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think you hinted at a couple of things there. Um, one of the biggest conversations that mental performance coaches have with clients, with teams, athletes is what is in your control. You know, at RJ Performance, we talk about the control circle. So we'll literally have clients like right in the circle, all the things that are in their control, and then outside of the circle, all the things that aren't. And so I think that's a good example of like size, like a kid cannot control his size. And so continually reminding him of this thing that is so out of his control, that's hindering his performance, it's not going to help anyone. However, I think there's a conversation there that we can bring it back into the circle of, okay, well, what is in our control? Maybe I'm small, but maybe I can do some extra speed and agility work so that I'm small and tiny, but I'm quick. Like I can get around these guys. Um, so I think that's something is thinking about what is in our control as parents. I don't think we should ever bring attention to the things outside of our control that sets kids up for some failure and some, um, just feeling like they can't do anything about it because they can't. Um, and then I also think you hinted at growth versus fixed mindset. And I think that is the most important thing parents can do is foster your growth mindset in your kids. Because that's something you sport is a microcosm for the whole world, for every experience that kids are going to have. If you can use it to foster growth mindset in your kid, they're set up for success for the rest of their lives and jobs, relationships, school, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, kind of both of those tied together. I think that really is like a fixed mindset um, pattern, it sounds like. And that's something as parents, you never want to fall into the trap of. Awesome. What's a, a couple things that, you know, or situations like specific situations parents find them in that you guys find to be like the top, I actually saw a social post on this. So I'm kind of hinting to that, but like the top couple things uh, for parents to avoid doing despite like all the urges they have to uh, say something or get involved at that moment. Yeah. If I know what you're talking about is our social media posts about things not to do right after a game. Um, and so typically it looks like a parent like chewing their kid out in the car right after a game and bringing attention to all the failures, things like that. I think, you know, the biggest thing I think is helpful is just ask questions, like just have a conversation with your kid and maybe even start out with, do you want to talk about it? If you don't, okay, let's just talk about everything else. But I think there's so much power in questions. Like, we even see that in our profession. A lot of times our clients know exactly what's going on. We just have to ask the right questions to get them thinking about it. Um, so I think as parents, it can be similar to just ask questions and ask questions that are bigger than just like, did you do well or not? Ask questions like, did you have fun? What part was fun? What part did you feel proud of? What part was really hard? And like limit your reactions, limit your responses and just get them thinking about it. Because again, that's a life skill. It's going to go well beyond sport is the ability to perform at whatever you're doing and reflect on it after. I think we do a lot of autopilot work in our lives and it's good to stop and reflect on what went well, what could go better, what can we learn? So I think asking questions is an awesome, awesome tool for parents. Yeah. And, and I think in that, if I remember right in that post too, it talked about like avoiding like the subject, like, I don't know if it would technically be subjective, but like uh, how many goals did you score or like statistics or things like that, avoiding that type of conversation with your kid right away. Um, Cause it might be something that's like, maybe they didn't even get a shot on goal. So now they just assume like 
I'm not successful unless I score goals, which yeah. uh, in any case, I can, everyone that's been an athlete knows you can contribute a lot without being the one to actually put the ball in the net. So, um, is that like something that they should avoid doing or, or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, you know, part of growth mindset is like focusing on the process, not necessarily the result. And I think it's a, it's an interesting balance to strike because you obviously you want to have a goal. You want to have a purpose, something you're shooting for. We don't want to be married to that. And, you know, we even argue if you're constantly meeting that goal. So let's just say a kid has a goal, whether it's his parents or him to score one goal per soccer game. If he's meeting that every single game, we would argue, well, that's not a good enough goal. We want goals that are hard to meet, that drive us to perform at our peak and drive us to put a lot of effort forth. Um, So I think there's an interesting balance between we want to have goals but we also don't want our success to be defined by meeting those goals. Um, and so I think that's kind of a unique way of looking at it, but it really makes sense to us because what that does is it emphasizes the effort. It emphasizes the process, which that's the, that's the crux of it. That's the conversation that again is going to serve you well beyond sport is things like effort, things like attitude um, that not, aren't necessarily reflected in how many goals did you score this game? Yeah. Do you think it would be sound advice to kind of like let like tell a parent, you know, if you're let's say your athletes just completed a game, a scrimmage or practice, whatnot, you know, and they get in the car and maybe they they have a feeling they didn't perform very well. Um, it probably like it would be bet general advice to kind of let wait until they come to you and want to talk about it. Or should you try to ask questions potentially um, to open them up a little bit or what's your thought on that? Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I say this from I'm not a parent. And so I sit here thinking about what would I do in this situation? Um, I think it does come back to just asking the same, do you want to talk about this right now? And then putting it out there like, well, I'm here if and when you do. Um, and just leaving the ball in their court, because if a kid is like really upset after a game, the last thing they're going to do, this is the same for just people in general. If you're super upset about something, you're probably going to want some space before you really dive into that. But in the same way, you know, you and I in social context, we would want someone to say, all right, cool, take your time. I'm here when you're ready. I think it's the same thing for parents to say, take your time. I know you're upset. I'm here if and when you want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, I think I think that sets kids and parents up for an awesome relationship too when it does come to sport to just like leave the ball in their court when it comes to talking about it. Awesome. I love that. Uh, let's swing over to, to like, so some of my kids that come to the gym will listen to this as well. So if we were potentially, you know, an athlete or a youth athlete listening to this, maybe let's dive into like a couple things or objectives they can make for themselves or ways that they can handle with these stressors that, you know, maybe some stuff that you guys give athletes to work on themselves, uh, when they're not in the gym, when they're not playing their sport or when they are in their Mm -hmm. sport or practice, but maybe dive into a little bit of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think from what I can tell about your facility, like you've got some driven kids who are going above and beyond with training. And so I think that's awesome. There's probably like some really lofty goals there, which I think is cool. It's exciting. Um, So something I think would be important for the kids at your gym to think about is what is their why? Why are they putting in so much time and energy into whatever the sport is, whatever training they're doing Um, and thinking bigger than just like, I want to play college ball or I want to be the best on my varsity team or whatever it is. Thinking bigger and really deeper about what is it about you and the things that light you up, that get you on fire, passionate. How does that connect to this training? How does that connect to sport? And figuring out that deeper why that's usually going to sustain them through the really hard work that it is to be an athlete, potential college athlete. Um, so I think that's something, you know, if you're listening, like take some time to think about what is my why and like, what is that deep why that connects to other things that I do that have a deeper reason for me doing them? Yeah, I love that. I just put up a post on uh, kind of that direction. Like I think sometimes parents and athletes, youth athletes, uh, get this this tunnel vision on yeah the scholarship right and I think the the statistic I saw was seven percent of high school athletes get to play any level of collegiate so it's 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 obviously a very low percentage um, 
but there's so much to learn about life in the process of training in the process of sport. Um, and I've continually challenged the kids and I'm actually, that's a good idea. I'm going to put up like a, something on the board, not necessarily have them write it down because it'll be personal, but ask them over the next week, you know, to find a why beyond uh, scholarships. Like there's mm-hmm. just a, there's a lot to learn and a lot of what we do here. Like we will, play along like we will have those conversations with the kid that want scholarships and like encourage that but at the end of the day um our goal is never to that's not our goal like we are the where people go to try to get their kids to college but at the end of the day like if i send a kid out of here uh, knowing how to train themselves confident strong belief in themselves and then walk into the, the you know college and then real life with the ability to train themselves effectively and smart take care of their body, take care of their mind, be, be confident. Like that's a bigger win for me than sending a kid to like a high level program, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I I love that a lot. Um, what are like a couple things, let's say athletes are in the heat of the moment, they're in practice, they're in a game. Um, what are some more things they can do like to maybe reel themselves in after a mistake? I know you talked about like giving yourself a time limit. Is there like Mm -hmm. any other objective ways you can give them advice on in terms of like resetting themselves. Like, you know, the old saying, like athletes have short-term memory, um, Mm -hmm. but but maybe some like actionable things or whatnot to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the most common state that we find athletes in after they have made a big mistake is feeling like too amped up almost. Um, So like heart rate is beating really fast. um, Just feeling like jittery almost angry sometimes. And so a lot of times our techniques will aim more towards some bit of relaxation. Um, So a quick breathing technique, which I know breathing techniques, some people are like, woo woo, like that, does that really work? Breathing is a superpower. I will just say that. And so this one is super quick, but it's called a physiological sigh. And all it is, like I can do it right here. It's super quick is you take one inhale through your nose. And then before you release that, before you exhale, you take another inhale through your nose. And what you're doing is you're kind of like popping open the sacs in your lungs and it's allowing more oxygen into you. And then you exhale. So it's basically a double inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. So we can do it real quick. Like I usually feel this almost immediately. So let's do it real quick. So it's inhale, one more, exhale. And that's something that has been shown to relax by bringing more oxygen, releasing more carbon dioxide in the moment. It can be one and done. And so I find a lot of times athletes want something that's quick. If you're in the height of the game, you don't have time to get a full talk into by your teammate or some sort of big self-talk conversation. Like it needs to be quick. So that's one technique is physiological sigh, double inhale, one exhale. And then the other thing that I enjoy guiding athletes to do involves kind of more of the whole body. And this is really good for athletes who feel like they get stuck in their head. So a lot of that negative self-talk of I suck. Why did I do that? I just ruined this, whatever it is. And it kind of gets you out of your head and it's called a quick body scan. And this is something that you can break it down to be into a ton of muscle groups. You can start from your feet, calves, hamstrings, quads, glutes, abs, all the way out to your hands, your arms, you can also abbreviate it. So we'll just do it abbreviated, like literally on this podcast, go ahead and tense your legs, every muscle in your legs for three, two, one, release, feel that tension go away. And then go ahead and tense your whole upper body for three, two, one, release and feel the difference in your muscles. So again, that's something that can be done super quick. You can literally just tense one muscle group and another muscle group. And by bringing attention to how the tension feels leaving, all of a sudden your attention is not on these thoughts of I suck, I ruined it, whatever those thoughts are. So I'd say those are my two that I've seen athletes enjoy using the most when it comes to recovering from mistakes. I like that. Mine, this is what I did and it's, I don't know if more people use this. Tell me if you've seen this before, but like um, in sport, even now, like I just play tennis for fun now and continue to golf and stuff. But uh, I actually, if I like make a mistake and I'm, or I'm in my head, right. I'm thinking a lot. I'll actually like use, like I'll hit myself with a tennis racket or like slap my legs or like actually like 
sounds bad, but a little bit of physical pain to kind of bring my mind to like back to the body. Is that, is that yeah. something you see or is that like a little, <laughs> a little different? Um, <laughs> well, I never, I never want to um, encourage someone to hit themselves or anything, but I do think there's absolutely science behind bringing attention to a physical sensation to get you out of that mental focus, which really that's what like the quick body scan is. And even that breath, the breath is going to be a superpower regardless. But if you can even bring your attention to like, what does that oxygen feel like going through my nose? Okay. What does that feel like coming out of my mouth? Our brain just can't truly focus on more than one thing at one time. And so if we bring attention to a sensation, then absolutely we're golden. So again, I'm not encouraging anyone to hit themselves to bring upon that kind of sensation. But if there's a technique that you can use to you know, induce a physical sensation, it's usually going to help you kind of move on mentally. Awesome. I love that. Is there any, is there any like uh, things we didn't hit on that potentially you would want parents or athletes or coaches to hear from you guys? Um, I think back to the mistake thing, one more technique. Um, a lot of athletes have kind of, it's like a, it'll just be like a routine almost. I don't want to say ritual because we want to say we have control over it, but it's something they do every time they make a mistake. So I can remember one of my college teammates, like she would make a mistake and instantly she would shake her hands and it looked hilarious on the field, but it was her thing. Like every time she messed up, she did this physical thing. And a lot of times it can be stuff like, I'm going to fix my shorts. Like maybe that was the issue. Maybe that's what made me mess up with my shorts. I'm going to fix my socks, tighten my ponytail. So I think something that can be helpful is if you already have something that you know, like all my teammates would say, this is my thing. I slick back my hair, whatever it is, play with that. Let that be a cue to then say something to yourself or a cue to remind you to do the breathing exercise or a cue to remind you to do the quick body scan. Um, so use what you've got. Like if you've already got something you do every time, use that to your advantage. And that's something we call a mistake routine is taking something physical that you already do using it as a cue to then do something that is to your advantage. Awesome. I love that. So do you guys plug for you guys moment? Um, let's say like someone that is coming in the gym is interested in potentially you know, working with you guys or somebody in tech, like, I don't know if you guys do remote work or what you guys do. So maybe expound on like, if an athlete is looking for like professional coaching on that mental side, cause we know it's just as important. Um, yeah. how do they, how, how would they go about that? Do you guys facilitate that? Or is there people you recommend like in our area in Idaho or what? Yeah. So it's definitely an expanding field. Um, and so with that, you know, it's not, not usual that we can say yeah for sure there's so and so down in your area um so i will just go ahead and plug us because we do do so much virtual work like that is what a lot of us have a ton of experience in um so yeah that just looks like meeting over zoom we all are very personable and so it won't be awkward like sometimes virtual stuff can be um but yeah that looks like scheduling on our website um, and then we'll, we'll meet up on zoom and really those initial conversations are just building up self-awareness, just stuff like, tell me about why you play your sport. Like, let's go back to the beginning. How long have you been playing a bit? How much do you love it? What do you love about it? Um, and then from that, we get into, all right, let's talk about, you know, what's the time that's been really challenging. What's the time in your sport that's been really rewarding. Tell me more about that. And we start to pick up on the areas that might need some improvement that could benefit from improvement. And so those are usually our initial conversations. And then from that, we dive into, let's give you actual techniques to try, actual tools that, again, we've all learned about in our master's programs um, for you to try out. And then a lot of times athletes just enjoy their regular check-ins. And so, you know, further down the line, that might look like you meet up and say, all right, how was last week? What did training look like? What did that game look like? Did anything come up that we need to talk about? Um, but yeah, this is an awesome field that I think, you know, it's good for people who think there's maybe a problem and they want a solution, but it's also good for people who are doing really well and just want that extra edge because the reality is not everyone is taking advantage of a service like this. Not everyone is bringing attention to their mental toughness the way that some athletes do. So I think that's some that benefits, you know, everyone, whether you have challenges or hurdles or you're doing great. Awesome. If there's like, so like, for example, we offer like a free intro session where kids come in, it's like a quick 
uh, assessment. We kind of break down their movement and then give them some feedback before they sign up. Is there a way that they can like maybe have a quick, like reach out to you guys, have a quick conversation with them or them and their parent and see if it's a good fit for them? Yeah. Um, I think I, I mean, I'd be willing to do that with you for whoever is listening, maybe some of your athletes. Um, so maybe we can include that in like the show notes or something, but put in like a discount code or something to where that initial conversation can be kind of like a feel it out, um, type of conversation. And then from there, if we want to keep it going, but yeah, I think that's an awesome idea just because people don't, they don't fully understand this yet. So it's good to kind of get a feel for it before you fully commit. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, uh, unfortunately there's like the battle your field will probably see is like the stigma on like the mental side of working on yourself. Like it's weird. Yeah. Like people, people say like, Oh, therapy or even like mental sport performance. It's like, well, I'm not mental. Like they just, there's like this negative stigma on uh, training your brain, although it's like, okay to train your body. So uh, yeah. I would, I would love to, you know, push some of our kids that we know as well, personally, that struggle with this stuff and, and, uh, have them at least do have a conversation with you guys. So I'll definitely yeah. link that in the show notes. So if you're listening to this, uh, check out the show notes, I'll make sure that you guys can click on a link and potentially, uh, schedule a, sh a short uh, meeting with Liz on, you know, if it's right for you and whatnot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to let them know before we sign off? I think, I think that's been good. It's been a good conversation. I think the last thing I would note is, you know, we've been talking about in the realm of sport, but again, sport in general and the work that we do goes well beyond. And so I would say my favorite feedback I've gotten from former clients is I was able to use that technique in school. Hey, I was able to use that breathing technique when I got really frustrated at my friend or I got frustrated in my relationship. And so, you know, this kind of work, yes, it's for mental performance within sport, but it's for mental performance in life too, which is what, you know, I get super, super pumped up about. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has been awesome. I've enjoyed this and thank you for having me. Yeah. I love that. Cause that's, I mean, what you just said is what we believe too. Like everything that they learn within these realms is transcends just sport. Right. So Absolutely. yeah, loved having you and, uh, thanks for coming on. Sounds good.